Hi everybody, it's Nicole again, um, and I am here to talk again about my calibration factor and my eye sig, my interstitial signal. Um, again, all these videos are strictly my experience and not to be used as medical advice. Um, but I wanted to make a follow-up video for what I did yesterday. In yesterday's video, I talked about how I calculate my calibration factor, and it was a very short video just about you know the actual equation that you use. Um, but today what I really want to focus on is why your calibration factor and why your eye sig, the value that you can find under your sensor status screen, is way sexier than what Medtronic, I'm picking on Medtronic because they're my company, um, but way, why it's way cooler than what they give credit for. Um, so first of all, in yesterday's video I said that my relatively stable um, calibration factor was about a five to a five and a half. But I cannot deny the fact that in the last 12 hours or 16 hours, whatever, um, because I've been running a few tests to kind of make sure I'm giving you guys good information, um, I have consistently since yesterday evening see seen that my calibration factor appears to be a 4.5, which would broaden my range. Um, so I thought that was very interesting because I do think that my blood sugar is, I do think my calibration factor is stable because it's been so for four months, right? Um, but here it broadened it a little bit. So I, so it made me think that what I do need to say is that every time you calibrate, it can fluctuate slightly, but every time you start a new sensor, it can also fluctuate. Um, so what I didn't do last night is I didn't, I didn't do my calibration factor at the start of the new sensor, and I wish I had because I probably would have seen a 4.5 then, and it would have given me reference for the rest of the life of the sensor. Um, so for me, all it's meant is I just keep looking at it and going, huh? You know, because it seems outside of the range I thought I was, but if, if I had done it yesterday, I think I would have seen that that's what this sensor was at, and I would have been using that number. Um, so with that being said, um, I would like to say that my relatively stable calibration factor is maybe a four and a half to a five and a half. Now, when I use my calculator and I calculate the difference in BG readings between the four and a half and a five and a half, it's just outside of 20% difference. Now, um, if I'm not mis mistaken, the FDA has approved a 20% fluctuation in blood glucose readings using your finger stick, using your tester. Um, so what that means to me, if I'm putting it all to together correctly, is that even the range of four and a half to five and a half for my calibration factor still gives me that about 20% fluctuation in readings. Um, and so it's not really all that different than what I would get using a finger tester, um, a sugar tester. Um, so I can proceed with showing you the magic of using the ISIG um, with the understanding that this is not 100%, it isn't. Um, for me, it's about 70% of the time, I get spot on. My, the number that I calculate using my ISIG is the number that I see on my blood sugar tester. That's about 70% of the time. About 25% of the time, it's within 10, 15 points. And then about 5% of the time, it's way off. Um, and you have to know that going into it because you can't do a correction bolus or you can't, you know, you can't do a correction bolus using this number, but you can use it as a ballpark. Okay, so um, this one I want to tell you. Yesterday's video, I calculated my calibration factor using a current blood glucose number divided by my ISIG value that I found on my sensor status screen. Um, and then that was my calibration factor. Today, I'd like to show you how to use your ISIG and calibration factor in order to determine your blood glucose. So I said it's an inverse operation, I think. Um, I might be throwing out fancy words that don't work, but I think that's what it is. Um, and it's really cool. And what it gives you the power to do is to kind of be the ultimate authority on what your blood glucose is. So, I'm, so now I have something to compare all of these other numbers too. So I have an SG that says one thing, I have a BG that says one thing, and now I have my own number, my internal number, and I have this to throw into the pot too. It really is helpful to me. Um, okay, so for instance, this morning, um, my, I wanna start with my, okay, my ISIG value was a 25.41, and I'll show you, it's gonna be different now, but I'll show you really quick where, that, where you can find that. So I go down to status, 
a good end sensor. Okay, 29.15. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. Okay, so that is my current iSig value, 29.15. Um, so let's just go ahead and do it with this one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my iSig value of 29.15. Put you on pause for a second, I apologize. Okay, I'm gonna go to my calculator. I'm taking my 25.4, that's not what I just said. I said 29.15, sorry, 29.15. I'm gonna multiply it. I'm gonna go by that four and a half because I think that's what I saw this morning, times four and a half. A 131.75. Now, so my SG is reading a 153. Okay, remember your SG can be delayed, so it's possible that I'm lower here. I hope this whole video doesn't go to poo if this is wrong. Okay, um, so I'm gonna give myself, now I'm gonna confirm it. Again, when I'm outside of the house, what I'm doing is I go, oh look, it's a 131, that's my number. My thing says a 153, that's ballpark, that's probably about right. So if I'm shaky, I'm probably hungry and not low. Um, but let's just see really quick. That's using a four and a half, and I don't know if a four and a half is right. Ah. 132. So right now, what just happened is that I took my iSig value, which was a 29.15. I multiplied by that four and a half that seems to be my number for this sensor and I came up with a 131.175, and when I confirmed it with my BG, it was a 132. My SG, which is delayed, uh, oftentimes by up to 12 to 15 minutes, I think, is showing a 153. So what that means to me is that I'm a 132, and I figured that out without using a blood glucose monitor other than to confirm it. Um, I had so many more things to say, but I just got blown away by the magic again. Because when it works, 70% of the time for me, it's like, you know, and then when it doesn't, it doesn't. Um, so I might do another video on this one because it's, it's important stuff at seven and a half minutes. I apologize. I think I will make another video where I give you guys a few more kind of samples. Um, but consider your iSig value as a powerful tool in your pocket. Um, that you can check your, your SG or you're driving down the road, you don't have a sugar tester, you feel like your sugar is high, but you're not sure, it gives you this ballpark, ballpark figure. Um, and any, any measures you take as a result have to be conservative. Um, you know, you don't want to overdose on insulin, obviously, but it's this ballpark figure that you can use just with your own stuff, as long as you have your sensor in. Okay, that was a long video. Sorry. Bye.